Hey there everyone, Hadesh here from LearnCodeOnline.in. Check website LearnCodeOnline.in for more amazing such videos, even more awesome than this. So let's get started and talk about further stuff. Now you are at a position right now, if you have watched all the previous videos and have worked through me, that you cannot call yourself as complete, naive or total beginner in programming. You know have some understanding, even you have created a basic program like Celsius and stuff like this. Okay, that's amazing. Now how we can proceed further and move from that? Now the next goal is to learn how we can write some condition based on programming. For example, let's just say you don't have an account on a website and you're still trying to log in. Obviously, there, is, there should be some code who can decide whether to allow this user to log in or not. Whether you are hitting a subscribe button, you are actually tapping it or not and decide based on that, should you be subscribed or not. So you got the point. There should be obviously things on which there should be some trigger and based on a trigger, we can selectively run some code. So far, if I look at this Celsius.js, it's always going to run. There is no such thing in this code which can stop even a single line of code to be executing apart from these comments. Comments don't run, okay? So how we can learn and can have this. Now this is all done using if and else statement. First of all, we are going to be walking through with the very basic if and else statement. Then we'll be designing a simple application-ish kind of a thing for my own website as well. Uh, kind of a base logic for that. So first of all, how does it work? It usually goes with the if statement here. And this is how it looks. You write your if statement or if keyword here. And then in the pair of parentheses, you write conditions. And this condition should either boil down to true or false. No exception here. It should always come down as true and false. Now, you don't usually literally write here true or false. You sometimes ask conditions like uh, probably three is greater than seven, which obviously is not. So it will obviously come as a false. Or maybe five is less than eight, which is true. So it's going to come down as true. So the whole goal or the idea is to somehow drill it down to either true or false, okay? So that's the step one. Now, in, if in the pair of parentheses there is a true statement, then only the code flow will go inside these parentheses and will execute the code, whatever you are writing here. So let's just say you're writing console.log and you are saying something like, uh, I am inside uh, if block, there we go and that's it now you can have multiple lines as well and you can say i am still inside the code block so as many lines as you wish you can have it here as long as the statements will bring down the condition to true this is going to execute so let's just run this and notice i'm into a new file into the 02 basics and uh, there we go let's just run that and uh, learn that and there we go so it says i am still I'm inside the if block, I'm still inside the if block. So that's nice. Now what happens if this condition doesn't comes out as true, if, if it is come, coming out as a false? Now that's also good. Uh, there's nothing to be much worried about. We can simply write an else keyword and we can have a code block. So what is a code block? Now usually in uh, most of the languages, whenever there is a curly brace, that means it's a code block. Now in some languages it is a little bit different like Python in that you don't have curly braces, you just have to rely on these indentation. But anything inside these curly braces or similar to like that, uh, it's like a code block, okay? And now we can have another code block. So I can just copy that here, paste that here, and I can simply say I am inside not the if, this time else block. So let's just say it is coming up as a false and there we go. So let's just run this. And that there we go, it says I'm inside the else block. Now there can be another situation here based on this. What you can do, there can be multiple checks of uh, like this. And we can check further here, like for example, if you want to check something like if, and uh, then you can have a code block, and then you can have your else here. So what you can do is you can just go back here and there we go. So what we are checking here is uh, if this is true, check this. If this is not true, also check this. And if nothing just goes inside the if block, hey, this is our like fallback situation and it will go just like that. So let's just say this is false, but this is true. Then what is going to happen? Now, I'm gonna say notice this part, okay? Because this is important. And we're gonna just copy this, paste that here. And we are gonna be writing something like, I am inside 
something like I am inside if in caps block. Okay, so that we can identify that quite clearly and easily. So let's just quickly run this and we're going to see I am inside if in caps block. Now notice a very, very clear situation here. Now, if anything inside the if block execute, we are not executing the else block. This is the core foundation. Keep that in always in mind that uh, if you want to check for multiple condition, you have to write multiple if blocks here. Else only runs when everything falls apart from the if. OK, so we're going to simply say, let's just say false here then we are going to fall into this block. So I hope you are trying to understand the code structure here. It's very simple. So let's just run that. There we go. Notice this part. OK, so this is all good. This is all like basics. Now let's just go ahead and move on and try to understand the situation here. OK, so this is a situation from my website, Learn Code Online. Now what we do on our website is once a user sign up on our website, and if he verifies his account immediately, then we allow him or assign him as a user or student or whatever that is. But if the user doesn't uh, verify his email for three days, we just plug him, put him onto a blocked access so that he cannot access any of the content. And we ask him to verify his email first and then only proceed. But also let's just say on our website, we do have some teachers and teachers might want to access their own courses. So there are a couple of conditions being working out here. So based on that, uh, we have to write a simple code in which we can design all of these features. So it's going to be simple, easy. Right now, we will not be working on the core features yet, uh, but still we can actually design a simple flow for this program to work on with. So first of all, uh, usually if it is a Boolean, I usually like to start with something like is uh, active, uh, is user or is uh, disabled, something like that. But in this case, uh, I want to first know who is coming on my website. So I'm going to be saying who is here. OK, now he can be anything. Now I do have three options here. It can be a user. It can be a teacher. Or it can be a, a unverified user. So I will simply leave it as a blank or maybe say a kind of a spam user. It may be spam. It may not be spam are not active users, something like that. Okay, so you got the point. So we're going to be working on that in a minute. L right now, let's just assume he is a user. Okay, now how we can write a if block code for that really simple, we are going to be checking a condition and we're going to be checking first of all, if who is here is equals to now notice here's a classic mistake. Let me do that first. If user is equals to user. Now this is always going to run true because remember I told you that this is an assignment operator. You are not checking anything. When you want to check anything, you use the double equal or maybe triple equal. In this case, we're going to be using triple equal. In the later on videos, we are going to have a discussion about this double equal and triple equal. But remember when you are checking for exactly like it's the same uh, object as well as same uh, string that you want to check, you might want to use the triple equal in most of the cases. Okay, we will have a discussion on it later on. So let's just go back here. And what we want to do if it is a user, we simply want to go into console.log and we want to say uh, something like a greeting message. So something like greeting message for user. And also we're going to say console.log and we're going to be saying allow access to view all courses because uh, we have to include one more condition of payments as well later on. But that's enough for now. Now, this is for user. That's going to work fine. But what about if he is a teacher? Okay, that's also interesting. So how we can do that? We have to first write else. Then we have to use our if block statement, a code block. There we go. So what should be in the condition? It can be exactly same like this. Copy this and paste that here. So it can be something like for teacher. And then we can simply copy this. And uh, we can have like greeting message for teacher. And we can allow allow access to allow access to his courses. There we go. Now, here's a quick thing. Now, if he's a teacher, if he's a user, that's all good. But for all the other condition, no matter how the user is coming up, 
I want to do some other things. I want to send a message. Let me just copy that and paste that here. I want to send a message that uh, something like this message, please verify your email or probably let's just hit command shift D. I want to say further or maybe I want to perform an action which says something like this. Send user an email for verification. There we go. So notice how clearly we have now understood the programming and basing and all of that. Now let's just say user is first of all a teacher. Let's just run this code and uh, notice it says greeting message for teacher and allow access to his course. Okay. What about if we have set the user variable to a user? Let's just see what we are doing here. We are only allowing him to greet message for the user and allow access to view all courses. That is absolutely amazing. Now what if a user is neither a teacher or neither a user, he's just maybe blank or anything else. So what happens here is if we run this, please verify your email, send user a verification. Also, if you just type something random here, which doesn't match to any cases, still we are going to get something like this. So please verify your email, send user a verification. So I always prefer that handle as many cases as possible, but in case there is nothing to handle, you can always leave them down to the else block. So I hope you are now getting a feel of how applications are being built up, how these logics can build really huge scale application. It's a matter of sitting down and writing tons of such code, but yes, there are better ways of doing these situations as well. Okay, so this is all about if and else. Now here's a simple assignment for you. And that is a very classic problem, which is a grade, grade problem. Okay. So what is the great problem? You have to match a student's marks, student's marks, and the marks range is gonna be something like this. Uh, if the marks are like uh, 10, you have to say something like amazing, amazing, and if the marks are like five, uh, now, right now we're gonna be going exactly, we are not gonna be covering range. If you can cover that up, that's gonna be awesome. But if not, don't worry too much, we will be handling that. So we're gonna be saying good, if the marks are exactly like three, this is gonna be poor. And if the marks are like zero, then we're gonna send a message, which is fail. So handle exactly the same cases here. Don't worry, we are not covering the range like five to 10 or 10 to that. We can do that later on. Right now, we just want to handle specific cases. So this is a simple challenge for all of you. I hope everybody will be able to do it based on what we have learned here and shouldn't be a big deal. So that's it for this video. I hope everybody is now comfortable with writing simple if and else code. That's it for this video. Keep visiting learncodeonline.in and I'm going to surely catch you up in the next video.